Good evening. Hello, Veronique. Good evening. So Good tonight evening. you are here mm -hmm. to. And I'm happy to be here. Yes. I must say. And you will present all the night on uh, on all the questions at the end. You mean all the nights? All the nights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because we have a lot of thing happening this. Okay. Yeah, tonight. So. I'm here. Have fun. Thank you, Jean-François. Um, again, I would like to say how happy I am to be here uh, for this new, this third uh, session of uh, lectures of Type Paris. Uh, I will now introduce our first guest tonight. Uh, it's Nicolas Durek. Uh, Nicolas is a typeface designer from Croatia where he studied. He then studied uh, in Italy and then moved in the Netherlands where he studied at the postgraduate master type media that most of you know uh, for sure at the Royal Academy of Art of Den Haag. Um, he's a founder of the digital font foundry called Type 9 uh, that merged uh, after a while with uh, Typotech. Um, his typefaces, um, I will name a few, uh, are um, Tremolo, Balkan, that he will talk about a little bit. It's an amazing typeface that he designed uh, and that can be both used in Latin and Cyrillic languages. And that's something uh, for Croatia. Maybe we'll talk about that, yeah, of course. Um, and uh, he has a prize at the Type Directors Club in 2012 for uh, the Balkan typeface. Um, uh, among his typefaces are also Type 9 and uh, Plotter or Amalia, uh, a typeface that he called after, he named after hi his uh, grandmother's grandmother grandmother name. Yeah. I think it's nice. Um, uh, so, uh, to name a few typefaces, and uh, he gained uh, an international recognition for uh, the quality and the innovation of his typefaces all over the world. Uh, following 10 years of collaboration with Peter Bilac, um, he, um, Nicola became a partner of Typotech in 2016. Uh, he's also very concerned about uh, transmission. Uh, that's the reason why he's also um, uh, developing a real uh, scene, typographic scene in Croatia. Um, he's a teacher at the Art Academy of uh, Split and at the University of Zagreb also. Um, and he's a Croatian country delegate for ATP uh, that you, of course, know uh, too. And last thing, this presentation, this presentation, sorry, wouldn't be complete without mentioning that Nicolas, also a drummer, I'm not saying dreamer. <laughs> uh, maybe also. Maybe. <laughs> but he's also a um, great wine and beer lover. And also he's producing beer and wine. So maybe something we should talk about later. Please welcome warmly Nicolas Durek. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank Type of Paris, Jean Francois, Veronique, Dave, all the students that I met today, they're amazing. Uh, it's great to be here. So. Today I will talk about the, uh, not text typefaces, I will talk about my display typefaces that have some like extra purpose or extra, I don't know, intelligence, let's call it like this. And I will present the Balkan project uh, at the end. So let's start. So this is my name, Nikola Jurek. Uh, 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 yeah, I work at Typotech with Peter Bilak. So let's start with the uh, Audrey type system. So for uh, quite a long time, uh, I was thinking how to make typeface that can, then you can really choose your own style. You can choose the serifs, you can choose the contrast, you can choose the uh, kind of contrast, uh, expansion, transition, or things like this. So idea is, uh, to make typeface that can be 
let's say, a little bit more intelligent than normal typefaces. So I look at the references. One was the Peter Bilak history. So where he, where he uh, have like different serifs or different swashes or different effects. But it's, it was basically just one typeface and then you can stack uh, things on top of each other. It was layer, a layering font. So I want to do something different. So I want to look further. So I found, I found this. This is a uh, Frutiger, uh, not Frutiger. It was uh, uh, the guy. Oh, I forgot. It was uh, Matthew Carter, of course. It was the Walker font that he did. So he can. You can basically just uh, choose a few kind of uh, serves and a few kind of endings, and that was basically, basically it. So I was looking what what kind of typefaces there is, classification, what kind of servers we have. So all these kind of uh, service endings. And of course, uh, you probably, students all know, the Nordzai cube. So you can really uh, see the two types of contrast and uh, going to high to long contrast. And so my idea was to embed all this possible situation into into one font. So this is pr basically the same thing, but just on the left side you can see the broad nib pen, and on the right side you can see the pointed pen. So if you see the top line is probably something like Dido or Bodoni, and the bottom line is uh, Helvetica on the right side, and the from the left side is like Times New Roman to Gil Sans. So all these combination are included in this ordinary type system. So it's going from both kind of contrast to low contrast to high contrast to pointed pen and to, to broad nib pen. And of course, weight highs, weight, uh, weight axis. So I choose for the 15 types of serifs. Some of them are like well, historical serifs, and some of them that I made up for, like that example, this one. It's not like it's some kind of bitmap, or but you can usually you can see like like probably most known serifs in these uh, two rows. Also, the two type of contrast. Also the low and high contrast, and also there's like some kind of special features: stencil inline and stencil with inline. And at the end, you get uh, these 512 uh, uh, combinations with 15 kind of servers. So it's like it's really huge system, and you really kind of know how to use it but it's really good also for i show it to students so they can really play with it and choose the kind of ser serious contrast type of contrast so it's really nice uh, to use it it also interesting that some letters are the same for example e but if you put it in different contrast this e is quite different i mean it's not it's quite totally different So you can see some of the combinations. Also some of the serifs and the contrast. So it's uh, all the all the all these 500 uh, styles are uh, not all of them, but most of them like were practically manually current current because you see on there's some service are long, some service are short, some service are without service, so you need to current like probably from five hundred like well two two hundred uh styles uh, need to be current. And 
I found this on, on internet. I didn't do that, but there's all all possible serifs that are in in this Audrey type system. Somebody download all the PD extract the illegal font from PDF and make this. And uh, in the on the website, it's it's not that big problem to choose. You you can there's application. You can choose the what, which kind of service you want. Which you can choose the construction. You can choose the amount of contrast, and you can select the style. So normal stencil inline on stencil with inline. So it's really easy to choose one of these one of these styles. It is a little presentation of this. Research engineers in laboratories part of the experiment to discover new This equipment quickly supplies the anthistic Genetic tape is used to store data required in working out with the climate Used to a magnetic drum or tape in the identification room on the large screen. So that the company may know where it stands financially. Use program by heredity and environment. Early equipment was crude. More than two million digits can be recorded on a single reel of tape. Yeah, so basically, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so basically, this shows what, what what can you do with just one typeface and so many styles. So I I was quite happy when I finished that project. It took it took me with my friend almost two years to finish it. And at the end, uh, there's a one carpet company in Zabok, so we start to make carpets. And I choose this Audrey system to make the carpets, and they all the carpets are made with hand. They're extremely high quality, and so you can buy it if you want. So this was in process. So you see like um, 12 combinations of the Audrey A. This is in the process. They're doing all this by hand, and it's really in the finish, it's look really, really nice. It's a perfect home gift. <laughs> yeah, this is my studio, so you can see how it looks. So let's go to gradient projects. So this is the projects that I was uh, talking about uh, in the beginning. So the typeface, they, they do more than like normal typefaces, let's say. This, they have some intelligent or less intelligent open type features that can do some work for you. So first was a start with first of these projects was Del was Delvard Gradient. Uh, all of these typefaces have has a normal styles and normal text weights and everything. But the, in this presentation, I will show only the display uh, part of it. They can do some magic. So this was inspiration. This was uh, one magazine for Croatia from Art Nouveau period, which has really black and really thin letters inside. I it was called Vienas. This is the first thing that I digitalized. It was uh, this is an expansion, a pointed pen. So it looks like this basic style looked like this, and the second style looked like this. So. At one point, I was thinking, what can I do with these two extremes? So I put just high, and then I type high there with all this weight. And so I was thinking, how to, how can I program it to work really in, uh, in normal software, like in Design Illustrator? And you get results like this. So there's a few. Uh, so this is like you can see every word. Has it goes from thin to the black, so if it's a word with just two letters, it will go really thin and really black. But there's a lo lot of things that you can you can change here. It can be like this. It can be gradient for all text block, 
So from the left is thin and to the right is black. And you don't have to worry about that because font is doing all these things for you. It can be from the right to the left. It can be f in the middle, it's going like waves. Right, and when you type it, it really looks like this. So this is not fake, this is just typing in, in InDesign. So it calculates all the possible combination and makes the things uh, looks gradient. So inside, outside, from left and from right. And w w I had this presentation in the school, so one student asked me, uh, how do you make this flash? It's not flash, it's just screen capture from the InDesign. <laughs> Also, also like this. So it, it depends how many how many words are in the in the how many letters are in the words. So it's calculate the amount of gradient. Second similar project was Francis. Of course, as I told you, this, this is like fully functional, a little bit uh, headline typeface. It was uh, inspired by European advertising for the early 20th century. Also, it's uh, Expansion, pointed pen. This is like normal styles. It's quite really narrow, but when it's go to the heavier styles, it get quite also wide. But think, the thing that I want to explore here because of this really uh, condensed and really uh, extended uh, uh, weights, to how t can I make this extra extra styled called gradient to work. So this was really condensed. This is like normal in, in, uh, in really heavy weights. So idea was this. So it can vary in width from also from left, right, inside, outside. And it's also font that does er all the things for you. You don't have to worry about that. But of course you need to, you need to design all this uh, from really narrow to really wide. So it's not, font doesn't do it for you. You need to design all this thing, but you need to make it work. It can look something like, like this. You can see in, in bottom line titolo, you can see O which is really narrow and O which is really wide. Same with the T. And block of text can look like this. It's also inside, outside, or right and left. So you can see how it moves. And it also can be applied to the block of text or just to the one word. This is some examples. Also here. <laughs> this is how it looks. So you can, as I wrote, you can do mastering in one word or in, in the more words. So you can see when it's go from the left to the right or just one word when it's going to gradient. And it was really interesting that last year, oops, last year they, the Grammy Award used this typeface as, the, as their identity for the whole show. And they really play with this with music, and music was going, uh, I don't know, loud, or and then they used white or, or narrow letters. So next project, Plotter. Uh, this was inspired by 
the architectural yeah drawings this is this was done my done by my father he was a civil engineer so i took this digitalize it and again i was trying to to push it forward 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 how how far can i go with this so it has the the i don't know the normal styles rounded styles uh, only straight lines only uh, patterns some things like this that they usually use in architecture but my m most interesting thing was to make again some kind of the gradient project as i call them and this was a, this is the the last line so my idea was to have uh, nine combination as everything to me is number nine so from the far left to the far right and you can interpolate all these things and you can make nice text patterns uh, in between so idea for this was this uh, sheet that i found so you can see they used all these uh, different angles in our uh, in architectural uh, drawings so this was my first proposal to have it also left from right right from left and the third line is uh, random so you have the really weird 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 look of the of the topography yeah it looks like this of course it's not really usable but it's nice and usually these things don't sell that much but it's really f fun to do it So this is random, so every let and you can imagine that all these things should be spaced and current separately because it's random. So it's really a lot of work. And we go to Tremolo. Tremolo was a, is typeface based on the Gutenberg uh, Biblia. It's exactly the same proportion of uh, each letter as the uh, Gutenberg textura not gutenberg textura as, as a textura but uh, it's uh, but i uh, add add so many things to it so it doesn't even look like textura at all if you see the the light styles if you see the shadow styles if you see the this uh, gradient style on the top right different styles and voices back to the into the single design Yeah, you know the guy. <laughs> of course, also the Bible. And this is from the Bible. I mean, uh, it's not from the Bible. It's like I copied it from the Bible with with pointed with uh, Brodnik pen. So this is Brodnik pen. And this is how it looks normal style of tremolo your stencil looks like this so exactly the same proportion as the textura but you can see it's really contemporary uh, ascenders and descenders are different but just like uh, like color uh, it's almost the same and there's a stencil style and there's a normal style and then i drew the tin because you, d you usually don't see black letter as a tin, so I designed this and also tin as a stencil. So you can really see how it looks compared to the textura. It's totally different, but, but I took the starting point was textura. And the text style looks like this. This is a stencil style. This is a tin, and this is a tin stencil. And this is how the whole family looks. But then I got to again to some kind of the open type intelligence, let's say that. So I, I call also this project gradient project, because you can choose 
colors from the bot bottom and ch colors of the top. And you can also choose the amount of the connection uh, between, uh, in this case, red and black. And you can get nice examples like this. And so this is a possible combination. If you see top left is quite, quite uh, rough, then you can see really soft top right. Bottom left is long and rough, and this is uh, some uh, shadow styles. And also on our website, you can, when you want to buy the font, you can choose the amount of the, you can choose this uh, connection, uh, how it looks, and you can just take that and you download the style, which one you want. Don't look at the prices, it's... Uh, And then I designed some poster with it, so it's really nice to use it. Different tones and different voices back in the single design. And this is really perfectly matching to to the bottom and to the to the top style. And you can buy this poster if you want. I'm not forcing you, just telling you that. <laughs> A little movie about it? <laughs> also nice specimen that I designed for it. You can see in press it's also really perfectly matching if the printer is good. And the shadow styles. And uh, Gordian was the last project that I did with this kind of not last, last before the next one I will show you. <laughs> uh, this was based on the Tryon. Uh, I think some of you today also choose Tryon for their inspiration. I choose like something like called Sans Tryon with uh, lower cases and everything. So I finish all the family and everything. But again, my idea was to make something special with it. So you can see it on the bottom line. This is again some kind of a gradient project that I that I choose. It has all kinds of okay uh, different uh, alternative letters, but this is the thing that I was most uh, excited. You can see like Borgo word. You can really see it's like going. Like I, I call this style Gordian knot. You know the Gordian knot is like going up and up inside and everything. So it, it has uh, four style. It has eight styles. Four styles. It's like going uh, south, west, east, and uh, of course at four four directions. But also it can go in the circles. It can go random. It can go cert circles in the like low doesn't. Uh, look like really disturbing and also you can go random in in low you can s you will see the few examples so i and again you need to draw all these things so you can see circle straight random and random this is uh, because uh, open type features are not uh, random you cannot they are not program language so you need to kind of fake it but you can fake it really good, so it really looks random. And you see the knot style, so gradient knot, you can see 
how it works. So you can work in all directions with all kind of uh, things. If there's like 10,000 glyphs in one, one, one font file. And the last thing, this is still not published yet. This was a typeface that was inspired by blues records from the 50s. This is our basic styles, but then again, I went to this uh, experiment, then you can have gradient in, in, in height. So, Nicola Jurek returns to its exploration of text patterns and gradients. So you can have it on the top, you can have it on the bottom, you can go from left to the right, you can go from, you can see inside, you can go from the right to the left, and inside. And you can create this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, patterns. It will be published later this year. And the last thing is a Balkan project. I'm okay with time, yeah? So the Balkan thing is totally different than all these things that I show you today. But it's uh, really kind of important to me because this was also my part of my PhD, but also I'm teaching a lot of students uh, with this uh, hi Croatian historical uh, moment. So Croatia, of course, Croatian language is Slavonic language. We have South Slavonic, Croatian. And if you see from the Slavonic list of languages, only these scripts use Latin languages. Other use Cyrillic languages. So this is Croatian alphabet. We have uh, five letters with uh, diacritics. And we have two, uh, three letters with uh, the diagraphs, so j, l, i, n. So you need to, of course, to know some of some about them to so you can so you can design it. So this is Croatia. Probably some of you know where it is. If you don't know where it is, you can see Italy. So it's so uh, during the the history, the, we used three languages and three scripts. We use uh, Latin, uh, Old Church Slavonic and Slavonic, and for scripts we use Glagolitic, Cyrillic, and Latin script. And if you see the picture of the of the Croatia, so this is really dividing on the West and East uh, uh, Church, how to say it, Roman Empire at that point. So most of the languages spoken, uh, written from the right side are written in at least in former Yugoslavia, they were all written in uh, Cyrillic, and from the left, they were written in um, written in Latin script. So this is our former state called Yugoslavia, and this is Croatia, as we, as you and me know it today. Uh, and also, see, it's I just found that. Uh, uh, you can see it uh, on the Google Maps that, for example, Croatia is written in the in the, and Italy and Slovenia written in the, of course, Latin and Bosnia, Serbia also written in in the, in the Cyrillic script. And we got uh, this is a story about that what is happening in Croatia in last uh, five or six years. So these people are protect protesting against Cyrillic script. So imagine that people are really protesting about against the script. And story is is this. So there are a lot of them in few towns. So this uh, uh, green mark is a town town called Vukovar. So uh, 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 in Af uh, in before 20 now six seven years there was really big war happening in my country especially in in this part so uh, the we Croatian were written uh, written uh, in Latin and uh, Serbia were written in Cyrillic so the people really connect aggressors to the script 
which is wrong, of course, but yeah. But that's the story. This book of art looked like this all in the middle of Europe 26 years ago. So they say, you can see, we defended Vukovar, but not Vukovar. They defended the Latin script, but not Cyrillic script. C Croats don't need Cyrillic script, says that guy. So the uh, story is, uh, if the 30% if the of the people are from uh, other nation than Croatians, like Serbian, they are allowed to have their script on the all the government institutions. So, uh, so government put all these double, uh, how I say, double tables with the Latin and with Cyrillic script. It it's of course says the same thing, but it's in two scripts. But then people in Vukovar in were really uh, offended and angry about it because they were connecting this uh, Cyrillic script to the aggressors. So story begins like this. can really see the anger and the passion and the sadness of the people. So this is how it looks. And there's a, also a deeper story that, that this guy lost to his sons in the war. So it gets really, really emotional. And th this is happening, not still, but it was happening during. So they put a new, ta new table. And then another uh, other day also they destroyed. They say return the Latin script and everything will be okay. So they put more police to watch for the tables. And then again it, it happened. So they put even the fence and everything. And even more police. And the guy that's making money to make tables all every week, he was really happy. <laughs> and. The, at the end, they just put the Croatian flag on the on both of on the both scripts, or just or just the Cyrillic part. So this is like a symbolic picture. So me, and, uh, Maria, Yusa, and me was thinking, how can we unite these two scripts? It can be like visible to people and that can all so we designed this balkan system so it's a cyrillic and latin script combined together and you can really read it you can cyrillic can be on top or latin can be on the bottom or or also other way around so this is how it looks So this is a this is for example uh, Dom Sindicata in Sarajevo. They use both scripts as official, but maybe they can use it like this. I'll go fast through this because this is the uh, diacritics and the diagraphs. This is how it looks. This is trans transliteration. The Balkans produce. The Balkans are European smith. They, they have been, the screen into which Europeans projected their dreams, and the, that and this has been their doom. This is by Slavoj Žižek. Uh, Slavoj the Balkans produce more history they they can pr consume. This is uh, Winston Ch Churchill. A little short movie about this project. Balkan sounds hybrid typeface system for inter-Balkan communication. Balkan is a new typeface system that consists of Latin and Cyrillic scripts. 
It is based on the study of a phenomenon known as Vulcan Sprachbund, a term used to describe neighboring languages whose sound and grammatical features have merged because of their proximity. The typeface system also represents an attempt to identify the features shared by some South Slavic languages and alphabets like Bosnian, Montenegrin, Croatian and Serbian. We focus on the dual literacy that characterizes Slavic peoples, many of whom use and transliterate both Latin and Cyrillic alphabets. Historically, there were three scripts in this region, Cyrillic, Latin and Regalitic. The use of Latin and Cyrillic typifies the former Yugoslavian countries, today Serbia, Bosnia and Herzegovina as well as Montenegro. Historically, both scripts in this region were bearers of cultural, ethnic, religious and political identities but their communicative and symbolic functions were often out of step just for the sake of multi-ethnicity. On the other hand, close development of languages and scripts throughout history resulted in shared properties. Today, some regional languages in the Western Balkans are so similar that they can even be thought of as dialects. The Balkan typeface system is a series of fonts that decodes Latin and Cyrillic. It demystifies, depoliticizes and reconciles them for the sake of education, tolerance and, above all, communication. The Balkan is a font in the usual sense. It can also be used to translate Croatian Latin into Serbian Cyrillic and vice versa. One could therefore think of the fonts as the educational software capable of reconciling discrete scripts. Like all open type fonts, Balkan can be expanded to include the Russian, Macedonian and Bulgarian alphabets. Balkan songs and Balkan song stencil consist of four styles. Three of them have different alignments. For example, all uppercase characters are Latin and lowercase characters are Cyrillic, and one style consists of uppercase Cyrillic and lowercase Latin characters. Balkan Sense deals with the concepts of transcending cultural barriers to often educational software which promotes new ways of understanding and using topography and typeface design. In 2012, Balkan Type System received the Type Director's Club Certificate of Excellence in Type Design. Um, you can see some Balkan in use. This is uh, really big uh, Serbian newspapers in Croatia. And you can see the, the hammer is the guy from the guy that was smashing the table. Also some examples. It's, it was it, it's still quite popular in in the Balkan region also nice typeface done by me <laughs> some movies posters also some posters I didn't design this I just found it and you can really buy a nice black and gold or black uh, red and gold poster and you can this is my dog. So it's called Tito, like former Yugoslavian president. Uh, I have one more, two more projects, but uh, my time is uh, done. So thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Only 14 years after its birth, the iconic Bauhaus School of Design was shut down by the Nazi regime. Many treasures and unfinished masterpieces were left behind, lost to the world. Founded on the central idea of training a new generation of artists to create a better world, Bauhaus laid the foundation for modern design as we know it and changed creativity forever. But in 1930s Germany, the progressive ideas of the Bauhaus were considered threatening and the school's closure became inevitable. But sometimes, what's been lost to history can be brought back.
The influence of Bauhaus lives on, and now you can design with a piece of living history.